We got a lot of news to get into today, not the least of which is the huge story that Ring of Honor is going dark, beginning probably fi- uh, following final battle, I guess. Yeah, so the, starting uh, December, December 11th. And, uh, and I guess we'll see when they return. Everybody who is under contract will be released from their contract in early 2022. They will be paid until then. They are free to work elsewhere in the meantime, although they will work the November tapings and the uh, pay-per-view, the uh, final battle pay-per-view. And we will see what the future of Ring of Honor ends up being. Yeah, I I guess the the basic gist of everything is uh, they're not going to be running with a contracted crew, so they'll essentially be an independent promotion. And they will use whoever the top independent guys are that uh, they can book on the nights that they have shows and the nights that they do television. Um, that, that, you know, what they have people on TV doing programs, they will not be able to protect them from going to WWE or AEW or, or Impact or anybody else that wants to sign guys to contracts. So uh, it's going to be a lot harder to have a continuity. champion. It's going to be real tough for a champion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it'd probably be their best in their best interest to have a champion who is signed with a company that they do business with, whether that's, I don't know who that would be, you know, maybe make a relationship with somebody that has, uh, you know, it wouldn't be an American company. And there's, you know, you know, maybe, maybe like something like a, a Japanese company. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know what the situation with new Japan. It doesn't appear that they have any really relationship. New Japan seems to be working, with uh, AW and, and Impact, but maybe, you know, something like an All Japan or a NOAA and um, have somebody who they can get, you know, under some sort of a deal with them just or else, yeah, their champion could be picked off by AW or WWE at any point in time, um, you know, all their champions. Uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting, too, because of what happens. They have a lot of talent, and I'm looking at the talent list. I mean, in some, you know... A lot of good guys and some some great guys and it it's you know it's it's like we are in a very competitive wrestling environment so you kind of go oh anyone who's great you know there there's going to be all kinds of people offering but it's really an interesting time period because wwe is cut back you know or, or is limiting the type of wrestlers that it wants as a general rule uh and most of the ring of honor guys do not fall into the very, I want to say, somewhat narrow vision of WWE over who can be a star, you know, in the sense of wanting people 27 and younger generally, six feet or taller, 220 and larger. And that's not really a lot of, you know, good bodies. Um, that's not a lot of the roster. Um, and then for women, um, you know, again, they probably would want younger women um, generally. Um, so, there might be some pickups, but but probably not a lot. AEW has a more wide vision of who can be a, a star, and they're not into physical looks to that degree. Not that they're not into it, because because they are, but not to that degree, not to the the you know narrow degree, so to speak. But how many more people does AEW need? They have so many people on their roster now, and they have. So many good workers. So, you know, when you talk about, oh, you know, Jay Lethal, just thrown out a name, you know, very good worker. Jonathan Gresham, who's really fun to watch. I mean, and I'm not saying that they wouldn't take him, but, you know, the there's no necessity to take them. It's not like they don't have enough good workers to fill up TV. They have too many. Um, you know, they have enough Matt Seidel's and Tony Nieces and guys like that. And, I mean, you know, you could always, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with any of those guys, and it wouldn't surprise me, but you also don't have a need for any of them either. Um, I think that really there's two guys there. You know, we can talk about that. We'll talk about it later. But um, so, you know, then the, the other questions is, is, is like exactly what caused this, which is, you know, the interesting thing is, and the sad thing, we talk about it all the time, is the two wrestling companies that I think did the best job best you know but i mean as far as i guess the most 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The 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 probably the the best job, so to speak, during COVID as far as safety of employees would probably be New Japan and um, and Ring of Honor, and both of them are the two also that because of that have suffered the greatest because of that. I mean, New Japan is still fine. I mean, they're 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 fine. They're okay financially. They're not going out of business or anything like that, and they're not. They made their cutbacks and um, they, you know, cut cost enough to where they're not losing money right now. They're not making money either. They're surviving um, and they're not hurting. They're, I mean, I mean, I mean they're, they're not they're not like, you know, um, WWE or even, uh, you know, AEW as far as like, you know, success and everything like that. But um, Ring of Honor was hurting, you know, I mean, they had. Lots of a lot of contracts, a couple big money contracts, but a lot of contracts, and they, you know, they can't draw, so they stopped doing house shows other than the pay per views. The last pay per view that they did did in, in, in Philadelphia did not draw well. Uh, haven't heard about Final Battle as far as ticket sales go, but um, they're going to they're not going to run again until April, probably April first. In the Dallas area, the, the Friday night of WrestleMania, perhaps the Thursday night, but it would be the WrestleMania week with the idea that so many fans are in town so they'll be able to draw a decent crowd and, you know, promote the big relaunch. And probably they'll do okay with that, you know, promoting the relaunch that week with, you know, 100,000 wrestling fans in town or whatever the number is going to end up being, um, 75,000, who knows, whatever it is. Um, but uh, so... so um, and then you know, like just just by the fact that their Ring of Honor making their relaunch, they probably they probably should draw. They're going to retain the TV. Sinclair did not cancel the TV, which a lot of people thought uh, was the impetus of this, and that is not. They will still be running with archival footage from. Um, I think they'll probably tape. I guess I don't know if they're going to tape after Final Battle at all because there's not really any angles to shoot or anything like that because you're not running so uh, but they may just to get some some more shows in the can but at some point whether it's mid-december or early january they will start going to archival footage you know like historic footage for the three-month period leading to april 1st or whatever the day is when they relaunch you know the, the date that week if they do when and <laughs> you know i mean um so that's the basic situation as far as what's going on. The town all found about it, <coughs> found out about it early. Uh, it was very sad. <coughs> excuse me, very sad day for the talent and for the company. Um, they, you know, I mean, they did. You know, they put talent in a bubble um, for several days before. You know, they taped most of their shows with no fans, uh, even when other companies were bringing back fans. And some of that also, some people, you know, they could have they could have done fans, but I think that there was the feeling that they weren't going to be able to draw well, perhaps. Or uh, Joe Coff even said that, uh, you know, it was no fans, so the spoilers don't get out for the TV. But um, there was less buzz for the TV with no spoilers out. I don't think that that was uh, a positive whatsoever. Um, but you know, that was uh, but but they taped the TV with no fans. Um, you know, they did a lot more than, you know, uh, AEW had something to, you know, I mean, AEW did test from the beginning, but it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't a, a long bubble type thing. And WWE didn't even test at the beginning of never gone into a bubble and Ring of Honor did for every, uh, every show that they did once they started back up and they started back up, um, well, I guess, they, you know, they started back up a couple months ago. They only did a few shows. They did, uh, and when the last shows, when the shows didn't draw, they pretty much canceled all of the arena shows that they were planning on doing and just going to finish up with Final Battle. And I guess the economics didn't work. I don't know where, you know, as far as Sinclair and the budget. Sinclair has many, many, many problems. They have problems with the RSNs. They're... You know they they run very, they run cheaply on their in their programming anyway. They just got hacked, um, which was a total embarrassment and a disaster. There were a lot of problems at Sin at Sinclair. I'm sure that that all plays a part into the story as well. But the fact that Ring of Honor was not making a profit um, with so much with, with so many contract you know contracts and 
um, not the money to cover the contracts because Sinclair was giving them a budget, but it was not the kind of a budget as compared to, um, you know, what everybody else has that they're in competition with and, and with their expenses uh, that they had. So um, a lot of the talent was planning on leaving at the end of the year that could go somewhere. Um, but, uh, you know, because um, most of the contracts were up. So, I mean, the key guys would be Roosh and uh, Dragon Lee, Bandito. Bandito, to me, is a superstar. Uh, Dragon Lee is one of the best in the business. Uh, Bandito's got just great, great, great charisma. Dragon Lee's just fantastic to watch. Roosh has great charisma, but um, Dragon Lee and Bandito are, are too small for what WWE wants. And, and even if WWE would hire them, um, it would be, you know, Lucha House Party. You know what I mean? That would be their level. And if there's nothing else in this world for you, I mean, it's a decent living. It's it's an it's it's a solid good even I would say a good living uh, in that position. But if you have aspirations of uh, you know doing really really well, it's also a dead end. Uh, and for AEW, I mean, like you know, I mean, Dragon Lee and Bandito would be fantastic there. But do you know? They already have Phoenix, you know, so it's like it's not saying that you can't have more guys like Phoenix, but there's again, it's not like there's this slot that's open like, oh, my God, you know, we could get Dragon Lee, you know, when we have nobody like him. Well, they got they got guys like him. They got Pac. They got Nick Jackson. They got, you know, Matt Seidel. There's all, you know, who's not even really being, being pushed. They've got so many guys. So. It's it's not necessary, but um, I mean, Dragon Lee and Bandito would certainly be my number one and number two picks if I was AEW as far as uh, who to sign. And, um, you know, Mark and Jay Briscoe, again, they're so loaded with tag teams, but Mark and Jay Briscoe are a really good team. And there's, again, if they had more TV, you know, I mean, I would pick all these guys up. But I don't know how many they're going to want to pick up right now. And there's other free agents out there as well. So um, I think that these guys, um, you know, Bandito could be a top independent guy, you know, as far as like for all these different promotions. Dragon Lee could be as well. Um, although Dragon Lee, I, was, I would expect to be working pretty regularly with New Japan once, you know, the pandemic situation is over. And he'll probably be working big shows for AAA. Bandito might be working big shows for AAA. I don't know. Um, he may not because there's Dragon Lee can get away with it, but Bandito also wants to work New Japan. And AAA is a, you know, it's New Japan doesn't really like to work with AAA um, to the point, in fact, that um, Will Ospreay was in talks with it for to do an MLW show in Mexico, um, you know, probably later in the year. Um, he was going to be booked on the show, and New Japan told him that, that he cannot do the show if any AAA talent is on the show. That's how much, even to this day, you know, the CMLL and uh, New Japan alliances and, and CMLL and AAA are at war. So the, the, there, there's fallout there. So like Bandito, you know, I'm sure Bandito would love to work big AAA shows, but if it costs him going to New Japan, that's a little political issue there. So, you know, that's another thing. But there's, you know, Jay Lethal, Jonathan Gresham, Mike Bennett, Matt Taven, um, you know, just up and down the roster. There's all kinds of very good talent there. And, uh, you know, that right now it would be, you know, expect, you know, it would be expected that they would have regular nice jobs there that, uh, are now going to have to either work a lot of independent dates, um, and and some of them some of them will do fairly well on independence. A lot of them will just be guys. So it's uh, Brody King's a guy. Brody King could go. I think Brody King could go anywhere. Um, WWE. Um, he's got the size for WWE. Um, they would try to reprogram his wrestling, I'm sure, but um, and take away. You know, he would be one of those guys that would go there, and then they would try to tell him that he doesn't know how to. You know, I don't say they'll tell him he doesn't know how to work, but they'll. They'll do that. <laughs> you know, they will do that. 280 pound guy doing uh, Lucha Libre moves is not their forte. Um, although he can do a lot more than that. But, um, you know, his big thing is always agility and, and 
You know, they don't. They're, uh, his style, but I mean, he's got the size, and he's certainly got the talent. Um, I think that now Brody. Li- I mean, um, Brody King. I do think AEW. He would fit real well with AEW. Um, he's another one. Um, I'm trying to think who else. What other talent that they have? Um, probably of uh, major importance. Um, um, yeah, Dalton Castle's an interesting one. Um, EC3 is going to be tough, although I think he could probably go to Impact. Um, Flip Gordon at one point could have gone to AEW. I don't know. I mean, he's his buzz is, is not there at all. I mean, he certainly had a buzz when he was on VTE as a regular. Um, of course, the Briscoes, as we talked about. I don't think WWE would take the Briscoes, but it's been, but perhaps they would at this point. They wouldn't years ago because Jay Briscoe once tweeted a homophobic remark, very homophobic remark, which is not, you know, wouldn't be a good thing, but I don't know if you hold that against him for the rest of his life. Um, yeah, Bennett Taven, Marie Canellis. It's going to be tough. Um, cause she's probably not going to want to wrestle. She's, I could see her going back to Impact. Um, she's a good talker. She's a good personality. Uh, Ray Horos. Um, you know, he is, uh, hold on. He's, you know, he's a, he's really good. Like, re, but, it's like again. I mean, I would rate him below Bandito and uh, and Dragon Lee. I mean, as far as that type of a wrestler, um, but again, PJ Black. You know, so uh, those are, I guess, the main guys. Dalton Castle, like I said before. So Dalton Castle is an interesting case. Kenny King. Um, I don't know with Kenny King. I mean, it's he, he could you know could go somewhere, not necessarily. Dalton Castle, I think, had WWE potential before. I don't know how his back is doing. So, um, but that's the basic just as far as roster goes. And then the question comes with the, uh, the tape library. I mean, um, and what, you know, it's a, it's an interesting legacy that Ring of Honor's had because, um, you know, they, uh, at one point were the number two promotion in the United States. And Sinclair had the potential when they had, this is when they still had the Young Bucks and Adam Page and Cody, um, they had the potential to really do something, but Sinclair, you know, either could make the move or not make the move, and they decided not to make the move, and and that basically opened the door for AEW, um, for Tony Khan to come in because he was willing to make the move and ended up being very, very successful. Sinclair has plenty of money to have done the exact same thing but did not see the upside in it, so they did not do it, although they did get the Mass Square Garden sellout show with... Uh, with New Japan, and they helped introduce, you know, New Japan. But that tape library, I mean, I think the tape library has a lot of value. I mean, you've got, Matt, you know, tons of matches with, you know, CM Punk and Brian Danielson and and um, AJ Styles and, you know, so many of the, you know, Christopher Daniel, Samoa Joe, Nigel McGuinness, um, up and down the line, um, you know, you know, and, and not to mention Tanahashi Okada, Nakamura, Kenta, um, Marafuji, um, you know, Ishii, you know, Naito, and all those guys. There's a lot of talent in that tape library. So that's another thing uh, as far as, like, will they sell that um, in the long run? I mean, I don't know. What happens to the streaming service? They haven't really said. Does, uh, or you know, I mean, will people pay for a monthly streaming service when there's nothing for four months they you know they might because with new japan world when they were doing literally nothing um people didn't cancel because uh, i mean some people did but not not many not that many people canceled new japan world when they were doing nothing with the idea that um you know they figured that it would they knew it wasn't whatever reason they didn't cancel there was no new product and they didn't cancel and um that i think that 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 could happen with um, Honor Club. I'm not sure what kind of numbers Honor Club is pulling in. I'm sure it's nowhere close to New Japan World. But uh, I don't know. You got any thoughts about it? I just hope that everyone gets jobs. I mean, that's the biggest issue here. It reminds me... Well, not everyone's. Go- I mean, not everyone's going to get a contracted job. Well, they're not no going to get a contracted job, but I mean, hopefully they will still get bookings with Ring of Honor and bookings elsewhere. 
I mean, that's the biggest issue here is people are people are losing out on jobs. And yeah, I mean, there will be you know, I think that the you know most of the ROH talent will will be able to work independence um, and get some independent booking off of the Ring of Honor. But I mean, there's guys like you know Moses and Quan and these guys who they really don't have big names, but they were getting you know pretty decent and. Like they they'll probably be able to get independent jobs, but I don't know how much money they be able to make um, on the independent scene. It's not like I don't know that they could command decent money. I mean, the top guys can, but they're also the ones most likely to get contracted jobs. So um, the independent. I mean, as far as like for you know, because all those guys were not allowed to work independent shows. Well, the top guys were not allowed to work independent shows. Um, but yeah, I could see like you know GC you know GCW will probably pick up a lot of the guys um, for their shows, but that's not you know it would not be contracted a AAW PWG could always already lose you know use anyone they wanted, so that's not really a change for them. Uh, they were the one that were, were allowed to use ROH talent, um, so yeah, it'll be it will be interesting I guess basically see who WWE tries to get what happens to Roosh. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, Roosh has made, you know, he's made a good amount of money for the last couple of years and, um, you know, been a big star. And he was with CMLL and, and uh, you know, that's fallen apart and, and he probably cannot go back there. Uh, he can go to AAA, but, you know, um, I mean, AAA is, a, is, is not paying that much right now for anyone. Um, so... It's it, and and I don't know that that can ch that that's going to change. It may it may change next year, and I do know that AAA is interested in in you know some of these guys for sure. You know, but um, you know again, how many shows? You know, like um, yeah, you know, you could work the big five AAA shows, uh, but you know, how many of them would get regular work on TV in AAA? I don't know. There there's a few. I mean, like uh, I would like to think Dragon Lee. Um, could could do that and certainly like again we said with bandito but bandito's the problem would be working triple a might be a political problem dragon lee it won't be for whatever reason he's under contract to new japan and they consider him one of their guys so if he I, i'm sure they prefer he didn't work for for triple a but it's already been shown that that he can and they will they will continue to use him hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.